a Stuart beam engine restoration part 7, removing the steam chest, making gaskets and refitting the steam chest, but there is a slight problem. In case you're wondering what's on screen at the moment, these are some cups that my daughter Charlotte produced. There was a time when Charlotte was going to help me narrate some of the videos, but unfortunately Charlotte's main business, called The Woodland Gift Company, suddenly got very busy and that was the end of that. Although the Steam Clinic website is still online and it's a bit of a forum for all things regarding miniature steam. It's time to change the gaskets on the steam chest because the original ones are really not very good at all and leak badly. With the video speeded up to four times normal speed, in no time at all the steam chest cover has been removed and this is what I see inside. The clip on screen is out of sequence. This is what it looked like before I scraped off all the old gasket material and cleaned up the port face. This gasket material is very poor, very brittle, very hard and very weak. And it fragments as soon as you look at it. Here I'm cleaning off the remainder of the gasket material around the studs. For this I'm using my trusty blunt chisel, it's ideal for this job. The gasket material that I normally use I get from a friend of mine who has a gasket manufacturing company and it's really good stuff. As you can see I've folded the piece in half because I need to make two gaskets and it seems logical to make them both at the same time. I've placed the steam chest cover on the piece of gasket material and drawn around it. And then using a deep hole marker through each of the holes I make a spot. But there is a problem. I refilled the deep hole marker and put too much ink in. Far too much ink went into the holes and smudged all over the place, but once I wiped it off with a piece of cloth I could clearly see six very visible spots on the gasket material, and this is where I will be drilling the holes. Before drilling the holes I need to know what the sizes are. This is a 964th drill, which is a really good fit through the holes in the steam chest cover. My logic tells me if I use this drill and drill through both pieces of gasket material very carefully on the marks as you can see here, I should end up with a couple of gaskets that just need cutting out. Not just the outer part of the gasket, I also need to cut out the inside. You can actually leave the inside in one piece on the steam chest cover gasket but I never do that because I have seen them go soggy and break up and drop into the engine. This clip shows that the outer part of the gaskets are slightly oversized, but this is normal. I always trim these once they're all bolted together. I reassembled the valve drive system and then I realised that I need to machine the gland on the top. Once I moved the crossbar out of the way, it was a very simple job to withdraw the valve spindle, remove both of the nuts from the studs, followed by removing the top gland flange and putting it in the three-jaw chuck of my Myford lathe. When I engage the clutch of the Myford lathe and it starts to rotate, it's making a very funny noise. At first I wondered what this was, then I realised it's the metal parts of the special segmented V-belt drive that I used on the headstock. Why is it doing this? Why is it suddenly work slack? Well, to be honest, I forgot to tighten the lock nuts of the tension assembly. Using a screwdriver I increased the tension anyway and then tightened the lock nuts so it should be okay now. By the way, while I was doing this job I unplugged the machine from the mains and I plugged it back in and started the motor. Both of the belts are now tight and it makes a bit of a squeaking noise if I rapidly engage the clutch, so this should be fine. All I'm doing is reducing the thickness of the flange on the valve spindle gland because it was too thick and it didn't allow for maximum valve travel under certain circumstances. To be honest though, the main reason for doing this was it looked very ugly. The piston rod gland was okay at that thickness, but now the valve gland is a little bit more delicate. After the machining operation, I cleaned it up on my polishing spindle and reassembled it as it was on the steam chest. I think it's time to test it and see if it works. Here, at high speed, I'm refitting the nuts that hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest. Once again, this clip is running at four times normal speed. Once I fitted the nuts using a nut spinner, I used a spanner just to nip them up. With everything back together, I now need to give the engine a compressed air test. I will have to reset the timing 
because the setting was lost as I dismantled and reassembled the valve. You can clearly see in this clip that the engine's running sort of okay but the timing's miles away. After a couple of gentle tweaks of the eccentric and valve position, now the engine once again runs like this. There's a bit of a problem when I start the engine. I have to give it slightly more air than usual to make it start. That's because the thickness of the gasket is holding the slide valve further away from the port face. And to be honest, the slide valve was machined badly in the first place. And now with the addition of the thicker gasket, it's miles away from the port face. As soon as I admit the air though, it bangs onto the port face and the engine goes. But I want it to be a little bit more civilised than this. I don't like the way the engine starts with a surge and then, as I reduce the pressure, settles back to the speed that I want. There's going to be another episode because I would like to show you how I made the slide valve sit closer to the port face. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.